Praise God. Greetings to Hebron family that's at home and everyone else joining us. I hope you're enjoying the study through the book of Acts. And I first want to point out that the, the key portion of Acts is chapter 1, verse 8 again. And we all know that very familiar portion. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. In 2018, new data from the Gordon Theological Seminary shows that for the first time ever, more Christians in sheer numbers live in Africa than any other single continent. Amen. Africa is on top with 631 million Christian residents. Second is South America with only 601 million Christians. And Europe is far behind, third place with 571 million Christians. Christianity in Africa arrived in Egypt in the first century itself. Today we will talk about the first Christian mentioned from the African subcontinent, African continent, and that's in the Bible in Acts chapter 8, the Ethiopian eunuch. Before we get to that, uh, let's start with the beginning of chapter 8. Last week, Justin talked about the speech of Stephen, and afterwards, in the beginning of chapter 8, we know that Stephen was killed, and, the, and leading that charge was this young man named Saul. And we'll learn more about Saul and his conversion in the coming weeks. And uh, Saul was responsible for persecuting the Christians in Jerusalem. And we see that afterwards, the, the people were scattered. Except for the apostles, it says, all of the other believers, the early first century Christians, scattered to many other places, including the neighboring Samaria and Judea. And we know uh, in chapter 8, one of the main characters that it's talked about is a man named Philip. He is Philip the Evangelist, not one of the apostles, but Philip the Evangelist. He was one of the seven men chosen to serve the tables along with Stephen to take care of the Hellenistic widows to make sure they were not neglected. But in addition to that, after this scattering happened because of the persecution and the death of Stephen, this young man, uh, Philip, became, becomes the main character in chapter uh, 8. In chapter 8, we see uh, that he goes over to Samaria. Samaria, we know, uh, is the Samaritans are a mixed breed of Jews and the Assyrians, and they were people that, uh, that was not uh, counted equal to the Jews. And so we see Philip the evangelist going to them first, and we see in that first portion that there is a great move of the Lord in Samaria, and we see that there's miracles and wonders taking place, and there is a great work of the Lord through Philip the Evangelist that takes place in Samaria. And it, it was so amazing that there was a magician that was well known in the town of Samaria named Simon. And he came to the Lord as well. And he had a true repentance. And then the apostles uh, came in from Jerusalem to help Simon. And uh, they are doing the work of the Lord. And there's a great ministry happening in Samaria. And it was in a time such as this that the angel of the Lord spoke to uh, Philip the evangelist and said uh, something and that's what we will learn about today I'm sure someone else will cover the portions about Saul or what happened with Simon the sorcerer uh, but uh, I'm led to speak today about this Ethiopian eunuch an Ethiopian minister of finance for the queen of Ethiopia Candace so uh, we see that uh, in chapter 8 from verse 26 to tw uh, 39 we get a detailed account of what happens. And it's important what version of the Bible you read this in. If you uh, read NIV, you might miss uh, verse 37, and that's key, uh, verse 37. So uh, if you have a King James or New King James Version, please uh, take that out. Let's go to chapter 8, verse 26 to 39. 26 to 39. And we'll study some qualities that we can learn from this Ethiopian treasurer, a sermon entitled To Africa and Beyond, to the Ends of the Earth. So let's read from verse 26 onwards. Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go towards the south, along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. 
This is the wilderness or the desert. See, the angel of the Lord appeared to Philip in the midst of this robust ministry that's happening in Samaria and tells him to go into the desert or the wilderness. So he arose and went. He obeyed. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of Ethiopians, who had charge of all of the treasury of Ethiopia, had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning. We'll go into that in detail. And sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. So basically walk beside this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet, prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, how can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. The place in the scripture where he was reading was, we see that in Isaiah 53 as well. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before its shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation for his life is taken from the earth. So this is a portion from Isaiah 53. I'm sure he had a scroll that he had picked up while he went to worship in Jerusalem and he was reading this and he uh, did not understand what he was reading, even though he was reading. So the eunuch answered Philip and, uh, and said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this? Of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning with this scripture, preached Jesus to him. Now as they went down the road, See, uh, Philip used this opportunity and preached the gospel about Jesus Christ to this Ethiopian eunuch. Now, as they went down the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, See, there is water. What hinders me from getting baptized or from being baptized? And verse 37 is missing in the NIV. Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So we see a profession of faith that takes place there. And so he commended the chariots to stand still. And both Philip and eunuch went down into the water and he baptized them. Now when they came out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught Philip away. And so the eunuch was seeing him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. This is a portion about the Ethiopian minister or the Ethiopian eunuch that we have studied and heard about from our childhood and Sunday school days. But there are eight lessons, I believe, from the Ethiopian treasurer in Acts that we can learn well. We can learn well. Um, so we see that uh, in uh, Acts chapter 8, verse 26 to 39. So what are the eight lessons that we can learn from this man? First, he was a man who went to worship. He was a seeker of the truth. And we see that in chapter 8, verse 27. He was a man that was likely uh, uh, someone who was uh, a, a person that was in the Jewish faith, that uh, knew about the Jewish faith and knew about the feast that took place in Jerusalem, the various feasts that took place. So to go from Ethiopia all the way to Jerusalem would take probably a, a close to a thousand miles. And so it would take him to travel about 40 days, it says, uh, maybe a month to get there. So it would take him a month to travel on chariots to get where he was going. And then he would attend some of the feasts and the worship that he knew how to do uh, or worship that he had heard about. And then he would travel back for a month. So this is a, a few months of an ordeal. Uh, and he was willing to uh, undergo that because he wanted to worship the, the, uh, the living God. And we see in Deuteronomy 23 verse 1 that his disability, the fact that he was a eunuch, uh, does not allow him to enter into the place of worship. Uh, if you go to Deuteronomy 23, verse 1, it says that. So this man, although he was a very powerful man that had all the money uh, and was controlling the, uh, the treasury of Ethiopia, he had a disability. He was a eunuch. And the word of God in Deuteronomy says that anyone who is wounded in the private parts shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. And so he might have gone to Jerusalem. I'm, I'm not sure if he got to enter into the place of worship. And he was able to truly worship the Lord. But he, nevertheless, as he was leaving, brought, uh, purchased some scrolls. 
And on his travel back, he started to read these scrolls. And that's the second thing we learn about him. One, that he was a seeker of the truth, that he wanted to worship the Lord dis uh, disregarding his disabilities. Second, we see that he was a man that was reading the scriptures. Even as he was traveling on his chariot, he was someone who was reading the scriptures. He loved to eat the bread, which is the word of God. Uh, and, he was, and we see that in 8 verse 28, that he was someone who was reading the scriptures. So that's a good quality of this man that builds on the fact that he was a seeker. And he was maybe dissatisfied with uh, the fact that he could not enter into the place of worship and do what others uh, could do. And so he was reading the scripture. Although he could not understand it, he was reading it. And we see that's a second good quality about him. He was someone who would love to dwell in the scriptures and get a deeper understanding of the true and living God. And then as he was reading, uh, as I said, Philip, an angel appeared to Philip and said, go down out of this abundance of ministry that's taking place in Samaria. Let that go and go down into the desert or the wilderness. And Philip obeyed the Lord and went down into the wilderness. And uh, he uh, saw this man and his chariot and his traveling taking place. And, it, and the Lord told him to go next to them. And he saw that Philip was there. And uh, we see the conversation that happens between Philip and this man. And he said, come on into my uh, chariot. And we see that there is a conversation that takes place. Se the third quality about him that I put down is he asked questions that he had about the scriptures to Philip. You know, when we meet together and we study the Bible, uh, there's many questions that, that we don't know well, but we can ask the people that are more learned, the people that are anointed, and we can learn. And this is a quality that he understood well. He asked Philip, who is he talking about? And then we see that Philip used that opportune time, and not for the quantity of people that was taking place in Samaria, but for the quality of one soul he started to explain the gospel message in verse 35. And we see that Philip uh, spoke about the Lord Jesus and the portion from Isaiah was actually talking about the Lord Jesus. And we see that at this, at this message, this Ethiopian man was willing to listen to what Philip the evangelist was saying. And not only was he willing to listen, fifthly, he applied this lesson into his life as we see in 8. 36. He uh, was a true seeker, and he, when he got the truth, when he understood that the Messiah uh, was there, and he was within earshot, uh, within that century, uh, within that time frame where he might have been or heard about the crucifixion and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and when he got that taught to him from the Old Testament scrolls, he applied that in his life, and he accepted the Lord Jesus as his personal Savior. And then verse 37, that's missing in some of the other versions, he confessed his faith. First, we see that he confessed his faith. Let's read that portion. Then Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, which is something that the Ethiopian eunuch said, because it's in quote, uh, quotes, and he said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That confession of faith is missing in some portions, but that was an important factor that was needed for, for this water baptism, the next step to take place. Immediately after knowing the truth, after seeking for this, after reading the scriptures, not understanding, and someone explaining to him the gospel message, he applied it into his life. He confessed his faith in Jesus, and he obeyed the Lord immediately in water baptism at the first opportunity. We see that in chapter 8, verse 38. Um, we see that he says... You know, what is preventing us from getting baptized? Because here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? So he was willing to obey the Lord uh, in water baptism at the, at the first opportunity. And then and, and the eighth thing that we see about him is in verse 39, it says that he went to on his way rejoicing as the first Christian from Africa. The first Christian from Africa. And as I said today, there are more Christians in Africa than there are any other indigenous religions or Muslims. There's, if you look at the stats, there's 48% Christianity in Africa, while there's 42% Islam in Africa. And we see that the, the beginning of that could very well have been this man 
who was seeking the Lord and who was worship, wanting to worship the true and living God. He was searching the scriptures. He wanted answers. And when he got the truth, he was willing to obey, confess his faith, obey the Lord in water baptism. And because of that, he went away rejoicing. And that rejoicing shows us the great joy that is upon him. So this melanin rich man, this monetarily rich man, who was considered an outcast per law due to his physical disability, found the true gospel, and that truly set him free with everlasting joy. If you look at the religious rules, this man could not enter the presence of God. And that was what was set up. There were rules and regulations and there, that he could not enter into the presence of God. But the true gospel of Jesus Christ was able to set this man free and he was able to find the truth, the living God, and that gave him everlasting joy. Amen? The gospel is for all people is an important lesson that this teaches us. Whether your melanin is rich or poor, whether you have a disability or you do not, whatever your status is in society, his status was high. He, he was in charge. But if your status is low or your status is high, all lives matter to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not just certain races, not just certain people, not just certain statuses, but all lives matter to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Philip the evangelist was willing to obey the Lord and leave in the midst of a great work that was taking place in Samaria. See, there were, it says the people of Samaria was also in joy because of the miracles and the wonders that were taking place. But he was willing to leave all that and obey the Lord. And so as Christians that are already in Christ, are we willing to obey the Lord uh, when he says, leave what you have and go into the wilderness? Many, of, many a times the answer sadly is no. Because we are enamored by the glitz and the glory of the ministry um, that is taking place and the thousands that are being saved in Samaria. But the Lord is saying more than quantity for the quality of this one person that is truly seeking me, this Ethiopian eunuch, I am sending you out into the wilderness. And Philip the evangelist was willing to obey. And because of that, we see now that this is the continent with the most number of Christians in the world. The first follower of Christ from Ethiopia was thus saved and thus began the evangelization of the entire African continent and the known ends of the earth. See, we see, as I read in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it talked about how we are to start with Jerusalem and then go to Samaria and Judea, and we'll get into that more. Uh, but we saw that Philip was in Samaria, and there was a great work taking place there. But in the midst of that, the Lord called him to go and minister to this the ends of the earth. At that time, in the known world, Ethiopia was the ends of the earth. But now we know more than that. And we know that there is so many people groups, unreached people groups in the world. What are we going to do? In Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and 16, it says, Then he said to them, Go into the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved but whoever does not believe will be condemned. So as the worship team is coming up, there's some important lessons that we can learn from this man that I wanted to bring up. As I'm concluding, this eunuch had a transformation that took place in his life because there was a servant uh, of the Lord, Philip the evangelist, that was willing to be obedient. And we can learn a lot of things from this Ethiopian treasurer. He was willing to go to worship no matter what the cost. Even if it meant traveling six months to get to worship, he was willing to go to worship. And now we have the convenience of worship on our tablets and on our TVs with virtual worship. Amen. And then he was willing to read the scripture. See, the scrolls is how he read the scriptures. But we have access to the word of God in so many different versions, so many different languages in our handheld devices, are we willing to read the scriptures like the Ethiopian eunuch? He was willing to ask honest questions about the scripture. He understood that he could not understand everything. 
and he was willing to get with other people that are more educated. He did not neglect the meeting of, of the, the brothers. He did not neglect the meeting of learning from others. And he was able to ask honest questions in Bible study with Philip. And he was able to learn the truths in the word of God. He, he was able to hear the gospel preaching. Not only did it go through his ears, but he was able to take it down into his heart. And he was apply, able to apply the gospel preaching upon his life. And he was able to open up his mouth and confess the Lord as the only savior of the world by opening his lips. And then he obeyed the Lord in ba baptism and joined Christ. And he was able to rejoice and be joyful over his salvation uh, filled with the Holy Spirit and go and earn and, and win a whole con continent for the Lord Jesus Christ. How are we today? Are we willing to hit that share button for the meeting that's going on? Or are we ashamed of the gospel of Christ? We have so much easy access to this, to tell others, to tell your friends. Are you willing to sit down with your friend who has questions and tell them about the gospel of Christ. Let us examine ourselves and use these lessons that we learned from the Ethiopian eunuch. May God bless you all.